Let me show you one of the strangest problems in gaming, the cool drink problem. This is a pretty simple problem. The name comes from one of my favorite series, Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter, for those who might not know, is kinda like a boss rush. You explore these different maps and hunt monsters. Each of these environments are unique in some way. You've got jungles, tundras, deserts, the list goes on. But that last one is where the cool drink problem occurs. When in a hot area like a volcano or a desert, you need to use this item called a cool drink to prevent your HP from constantly draining. Fine in theory, right? Well, here's why it's a bit of an issue. Cool drinks are inexpensive. You can hold five of them at a time, and they last five minutes each, so you're never really gonna run out. Lastly, there's never a question on whether or not you should use them. Either you use a cool drink, or your HP gradually drops. So the question is, why are they here? There is no simple one-size-fits-all answer to this, and plenty of games have this problem. JRPGs, for example, have healing after battles. After a battle, you've gotta heal the damage you just took. You could also just wait a bit until the damage gets substantial enough, but eventually you're gonna have to heal. Potions are usually relatively inexpensive, and healing spells are equally plentiful. So isn't this just a waste of time? Ideally, instead of pausing the game, scrolling through the menu, and healing every single time you fight, the game would complete that monotonous task for you. Well, what if I told you I found a game that does? But the cool drink problem is hardly the biggest issue that this game solves. In fact, it feels like the developer set out to make the most streamlined, player-friendly experience possible. Through their love for games, and more specifically JRPGs, they've created a game that feels like it was made with the spirit of the past and the polish of the present. In doing so, this game was even able to solve a certain problem that I've been waiting for games like this to address for a long time. And I'm sure you'll appreciate it too, since this is something that's surprisingly rare in modern games. But once you know one key piece of information, you'll quickly realize that this may never happen again. So trust me, you do not want to miss out on... If you've been subscribed long enough, it might not surprise you to know that my favorite genre of video games are probably JRPGs. A large part of this is likely because I grew up watching my brother play Final Fantasy games. But little did I know, there was a huge problem right in front of me that I wouldn't be able to recognize for another decade. JRPGs are not short games. They can be well over 100 hours long, but that's not really the problem. Nor is this something that only JRPGs have to deal with. It's actually quite common in games, but it can feel worse in longer games because you have to deal with it for a longer period of time. So let's talk about quality of life. Quality of life and lack thereof can become extremely arduous in these longer games. What was a mild inconvenience in hour 1 can become maddening in hour 50. The team behind Chained Echoes were well aware of this when they started making the game. See, they addressed basically every single quality of life problem you could have with games like these. First, of course, there's the healing post-battle. I mentioned this earlier, but there's more to it than meets the eye. Because of this post-battle healing, you're guaranteed to enter each encounter with full health and TP. This essentially allows every single encounter to feel meaningful and challenging. You don't need throwaway enemies that can barely damage you and get knocked out in one hit anymore. You can have actual challenging encounters because you're always fully prepared for them. And speaking of those enemies, there are no random encounters in this game at all. Every single enemy encounter is planted at a specific spot, plenty of which block your path and force you to fight your way through. But what happens when you run into one of those enemies that you can't beat? Well, simple. You run away. Which works, 100% of the time, on the first turn, without fail. So now you don't have to hesitate to explore to your heart's content, because if you do accidentally stumble into a place you're not supposed to be in, you can just leave. But I haven't addressed one of the biggest problems that often sneaks its way into JRPGs. Grinding. It may not come as a surprise, but there's no grinding in this game. Levels don't exist. You get these items called Grimoire Shards that act as a level up for every single member of your team, even the ones that didn't participate in the fight. Using these, you can level up your stats or unlock new abilities and skills. You gain these shards by defeating story bosses. And again, this allows for perfect scaling since the game always knows how strong you should be. And even if it's wrong, you've got customizable difficulty settings to ensure the smoothest experience possible. I could keep going with this, but I think you get the big picture here. Just about 99% of what could cause minor grievances in most other games in this genre just don't exist here. And yet, this 
isn't why you play Chained Echoes. Sure, all of this is great as far as complementing the best parts of the game, and it's important to know this stuff if you're on the fence, but the true brilliance of this game is demonstrated in two other distinct ways. Let's start with the first, combat. Now, before I say this, I love turn-based combat. In fact, I'll be playing Octopath 2 later this month, and some of my favorite- you know what, forget it, this isn't gonna stop you. Turn-based combat kinda sucks. I mean, that doesn't change the fact that I love it, but fundamentally it needs something extra for it to be enjoyable. At a very basic level, turn-based combat comes down to two actions, heal when hurt and attack when healthy. That's pretty much it. This system expands a bit with buffs and skills, but it's still the same basic idea. Something like Final Fantasy X changes this system with the ability to swap characters in and out. Now, it's not just about healing and attacking. You need to plan out which character will be the best for the situation you're in. Lulu, for example, can deal tremendous magic damage, but her defense isn't as high as someone like Waka. Is the damage you might take worth the damage that you'll be able to deal? It makes the entire system far more complex and asks you to consider which character would fit best in which circumstances. Now, as for simple healing and attacking, you could say real-time games like Dark Souls and Monster Hunter follow the same format, and you'd be right, but there's a key difference. In these games, I don't have to heal when hurt. I can avoid attacks if I play well enough, and that's just not the case in turn-based games. 95% of the time, if a normal character has low health, the next attack that targets them will knock them out. This is why adding stuff like character swapping is so important. So with this in mind, Chained Echoes has some of the best combat I've ever seen. There are plenty of other games that breathe new life into turn-based combat, but few have done it as well as Chained Echoes. And it's all thanks to this right here, the Overdrive Bar. It's got three different sections, Normal, Overdrive, and Overheat, while in the yellow, nothing changes. When you hit green, you enter Overdrive. In Overdrive mode, you get some substantial bonuses. First, you get a damage increase, so from now on, every single hit deals double damage. Next, you get a defense increase, you'll only take half damage. Finally, there's potentially the biggest benefit of all, every single skill costs half TP. You basically always want to stay in overdrive because of the dramatic benefits it grants you, kinda like how you always want to be subscribed because of the great videos you'll miss if you're not. Lastly, there's the overheat portion of the bar, when in this segment, you take double damage and nothing else changes. Now, before we talk about why this system is so brilliant, there's one last thing you need to know. You move between these segments of the bar by performing actions and getting hit. This square in the top left shows you what kind of actions will lower the bar. The type of action changes once every few turns. So here's the TLDR. Any action that's not this will raise the bar. Green boosts damage and defense and lowers TP usage. Red lowers defense and yellow does nothing. This by itself is such a clever solution to that attacking and healing problem from earlier. Now you have to consider how far into the bar you are each time you use a move. Maybe you want to heal, but the icon in the box is on magic and you're at the end of green. So one more action and you'll take double damage. Is that heal really worth it? Maybe you accept that you're gonna go into overheat no matter what, and since the fight's gone on for a while, you try to go all out and deal as much damage as you can in hopes that you can finish it with one last hit, knowing full well that that may cost you the fight if you're wrong. But this only works so well because of the overwhelming reward from being in overdrive and the overwhelming punishment from being in overheat. I mean, you really don't realize how much double damage is until you go from taking half to double in one turn. It can totally turn the tide of a battle and not in your favor. If that's all there was to the combat, it'd be great, but I wouldn't be praising it as much as I am if it weren't for the little things that make a huge difference. You've got character swapping like in Final Fantasy X. Swapping characters also lowers your overdrive bar, so sometimes you'll notice that a character in the reserves has a skill that can lower the bar a bit, but maybe this is a magic user and the boss resists magic. They won't be very useful outside of lowering the bar, but maybe that's exactly what you need right now. I suspect with how much customization this game allows for, the path to victory will be entirely dependent on not just how you decide to build your character, but how you decide to use them as well. And see, that right there is the secret. That's why this combat is so much fun. There are so many decisions to make, there are hundreds of questions and thousands of answers, each of which is just as viable as the last. 
And yet, this is barely scratching the surface. You could make entire videos dissecting this game's combat. It continues to evolve throughout the game with things like sky armors which totally overhaul the overdrive system, enemies with unique abilities and status effects, new skills, characters, and options for customization. The gameplay continues to evolve in such unique and exciting ways that even near the end it still felt fresh and gratifying. But one thing remains true through it all. Whether or not you're able to complete an encounter isn't about your stats, but your skills and ability to really think ahead and cleverly solve whatever problem lies in front of you. And that's what really makes a great combat system. And despite all of this, there's still one last problem that Chained Echoes is able to solve, and it may be its single biggest strength. Chained Echoes knows when to stop. Have you ever watched a series that just keeps going long after it should have ended, and you just have to watch it slowly become a shell of what it once was? Or maybe you've played a game that was going great, everything was clicking from the story to the characters to the gameplay, when suddenly you're hit with a 45 minute puzzle that grinds everything to a halt. There's one section late game that, obviously I'm not going to show, where you fight your way through this dungeon, beat a boss, and finally run into a character. Most games would have you fight this character as well, but Chained Echoes instead takes what would have been the second boss fight in a row after an already long and challenging dungeon, and instead turns it into one of the most stunning and powerful moments in a game I've played in a long time. And this is just one example of this. You'll notice as you play through the game that it feels like almost nothing overstays its welcome. Everything is there for exactly as long as it needs to be. So, in 2018 a game called CrossCode came out, but tragically, despite its exceptional quality, barely anyone played it. That isn't to say no one played it, but relative to its quality, the numbers are far lower than they should have been. With Chained Echoes, the situation is concerningly similar. But maybe widespread success and millions of sales isn't what this is about. Let me explain. This game was, impossibly, developed by one guy. See, Matthias Linda is a big fan of old JRPGs. He grew up playing the classics, Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy VI, you know the ones. These games were special to him, and so he set out to create something that showed people what he felt when he played those games. A game with the spirit of the past and the polish of the present. This isn't a game made to extract every last penny from the player. There is no padding to ensure it can reach some arbitrary length. Chained Echoes is just a game made by someone who truly loves this medium, and that's exactly who it's for.